everyone, uh, welcome back to uh, my session report. Uh, this week we're going to finish off the session report and add a few final details uh, to finalize the report fully. Uh, if you're finding my videos for the first time, please make sure you hit like and subscribe on the YouTube channel so you're notified of future videos. Uh, so this week, as I said, we're going to finish off our match report. So you can see I've already added a few different things and added some color to all our cards. Uh, these are all based on the plant versus actual. And um, today what we're going to do is we're going to change everything so we only have these plant versus actual, or sorry, compared to gain and non values. Um, so we're not going to show any absolute values to the coach for this report. Um, just as it's simple, it's one number, they don't have to learn anything else. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add our percentages here on the left. So I'm going to have three graphs here. I've already created a couple, but I'm just going to show you this one to make it really simple. This is just a bar chart, a cluster bar chart, and I've only got the two values. I don't have an axis field. Uh, and then one of the big things you can do is you can turn off the title. Uh, you can turn off the legend. And the big thing I do is turn off responsive. That'll just help it fit a bit better into our uh, axes. And then the last thing you can do, uh, as I keep forgetting this one here, is you can, uh, in the y-axis, change the width of your categories. Uh, so you can change the minimum width and that'll just allow it to be as big as possible. Um, you can also change the padding. So if you want some uh, gap between, uh, so one thing you could do here, if I change this to, if I change it like that, then it's just gonna be a, uh, um, stacked chart and I would need to change my x-axis let's just go to this and so now we've got this but we don't really want that uh, so we're going to use our cluster chart and it's going to just keep uh, the gaps in between uh, minimal and um, so I can turn off this guy and we'll keep our uh, for now we'll keep our x-axis as auto uh, but once we do this, you're going to see you're going to have to change it slightly. So let's add in our uh, TD game percentage here. And then uh, the bottom, let's add our planned total distance. So then we have our two bars. Um, and what I really like to do here is to make this really simple for a coach. If you add in an end value, say 1.5, it can be anything you like. Um, We'll change the color of this. And then what you can do, just to give your coach a reference, is you can add a constant line. And so we'll have this on each of our, um, of our graphs here, and it's just gonna be at one. And we're gonna make this uh, green. And we're not gonna have it transparent. And um, so this, all this is gonna do is it's just gonna show you the coach. This is a reference between what we did, but then where is our game value? So a game should be up here. So this is going to be 100%. So now you very simply, you get like today, we have done 39% compared to we planned 34. Uh, but then our value is this far away from the potential game value. Very simple. So I've done the same thing for a couple of other measures. I'm just going to unhide them here. Uh, I have band 5 and band 7 data so i guess high speed and sprint what you can do is you could combine a couple of those uh, to give you a good indication of how much high speed you're doing uh, you could add something like accelerations or if you're using catapult like ima something like that um i wouldn't suggest adding player load as well down there uh, typically you will find those values to be very similar uh, and sort of um Sort of represent each other because they're so closely uh, closely related. Um, it might be the same with uh, Statsport's uh, version of player load, which I haven't used myself. Um, but so far now we can see here we've got our comparisons. If I change to another day, I've tried to add in some days where you can see there is some difference. So this might be a day where it's gone a little bit too much on distance, and that might have come from very high in high in sprint speeds. Otherwise, here's a day where everything is pretty much bang on target. So we've got some variation here. All 
All right. So now that we have this, one last thing we can add is a table. I'm going to use a matrix. Um, and we can use this to uh, show uh, some player data. So we can have this to show the coach every player on the team and how they're getting on or how they went in that session. So let's do this here. We're going to add first position in our rows. So then in this case, our coach can see grouped by position. And then we can just add our athlete name here. And then you can use your hierarchy button and just push that. Um, then what we can do is we can change the size of our row headers. We'll make the font white rather than uh, sort of the pale pink kind of color. And let's just make it 16. We can make it a bit bigger then. We'll make it a little bit smaller. Let's go 14. Okay. And then our values, what we can do, we have two options here. You could show absolute data. So if you really wanted to, you could add in uh, total distance as a value, for example, or you could have player load. But we're wanting to keep this nice and simple. What I'm going to do is just change the size of our values as well. Uh, so we want to keep this as simple as possible for the coach. And so what we'll do is we'll just use our percentage values. So we're going to go here and we'll just grab each of these. I'm just going to click them and then I'll reorder them. So let's have them so they match what we have above. And then what you can also do is change the values here, or the names here, so they match what you have up above. If you wanted to, you could use uh, some acronyms to uh, make the text a bit smaller. Uh, that's up to you and how you want to uh, handle your data and present that to your coach. Um, so here we can go and uh, we need to make our column headers a bit bigger. So let's match what we have, 14. And then what we can do is just align that to align it center. Okay. And then uh, the one annoying thing with how the matrix works is you need to uh, choose each value here in the field formatting. So We'll go through each one and we'll just add our alignment to be center and we'll use zero decimal places for each of these just to make it very easy. We don't want it to be too uh, full of decimal points. Okay. And then what you can do is we're going to go to subtotals and we're going to get rid of those because that just makes it a bit messy. Oops. They clearly didn't add sprint to be center aligned. There we go. Okay, and then what you can do is you can change the size of these columns, to spread it out a little bit. And then the last thing I like to do is I uh, change the, uh, the background of my, um, my values to be white. When you do this, it'll get rid of the banded row style. And I'm going to click that as well, just to make sure it's off. So now it looks like this. Very nice and easy to see. Uh, what you can do as well um, is you can add coloring conditional formatting to this table if you would like. Um, and you can do it in very much the same way as what we had. So say if we had total distance, we can use this. And what we can do is use our uh, rule again. And we can use planned load, planned actual, and let's just go with total distance here. And we could add the same things that we had before. So it's uh, greater than or equal to, and we can get rid of the zero, so it's minimum. And then negative 0 0.05, for example. And let's just add our white color. So if we were to do that, we've got no one. So let's add in another one. Negative 0 0.05, 0 0.05. And we can add in our middle color. Greater than or equal to, oh, I need to change this from percent to number. Okay. 
want this to be a minimum. Okay, there we go. And now we've got a couple of guys falling in, but then you can see the rest of them above what we had planned. So we can show that as well if we like. Uh, number, and we just want this to be greater than, it's going to be less than the maximum. Let's make it a dark color. So it'd be just like that. And you could show that to the coach uh, so they could see clearly who's above or below. But we're going to keep it simple. I'm just going to leave it like this today. So that we have our report. Uh, the one final thing I like to do is sort of add some more uh, information. So we don't really have our, just, uh, the name for our metrics here. So we don't know what they are. Uh, we don't know what these colors mean. And we don't know what the colors are going to mean here, especially on a day where we've got some higher values. So I use backgrounds um, and I'll show you how to do this in a future video. Um, but what you do is just add an image uh, and I've got this session report one here. Um, I always make it fit in the image fit. Uh, that will just help, especially with printing. Um, it will fit in a bit better. Um, so now as you can see, we've got some colors to denote what below, within and above our target range looks like. Uh, what each of these colors mean, including our uh, percentage value. So we can make these a bit wider here. So let's do that. Uh, so we can see planned versus actual. So planned, actual, and then game norm percentage here. And it's just player values, what we've got on the table that we're presenting. You can also add a bit of information down the bottom, what those game norm values are and what that means. Uh, so it's typical of a 90 minute match performance here. Um, so you get a good idea and it can give your coach an easy way of looking back at what the data means. So there we have our session report. We can use our filter to change between any given day. So for example, there's an off day, endurance day, or we can scroll all the way through and find a match day. And you can see all matches are typically going to be the same. You could probably use a different match report uh, to show um, your match related data and you could change this so that your filter actually uh, shows your last day first uh, which is probably what you would want to do so it's really easy to use for yourself. From there you can hit uh, export and export to a PDF and it'll create a nice PDF for you to send around to your coach um, and what I'd like to do as well is just create a screenshot of the report and you can paste that in an email if you send that to your coach. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this sort of three part series on creating a session report. Uh, if you did, please make sure you hit like and subscribe down below uh, to be notified of future videos. Uh, and I hope you'll join me next time and we will continue to power performance through data. Thank you.